This is Jackie. I'm here with your all-access interview with Cardinox on day four of a hot, humid uh, Delaware's Firefly. Um, describe your sound for all those new viewers out there who don't get to come to the festival. Um, it's like electro, indie, dancey pop music. Um, we like to have, you know, really big hooks and really big drums and very um, 80s influenced. Yeah. Very with the drums. Yeah, yeah. Child of the 80s, I love that. That's always good. Um, is there a, a song that you have out right now, or even a, a, an older song uh, that best represents your overall sound? So we actually just finished recording our album uh, a few months ago, and we'll be releasing it soon. So all it, that definitely feels like a culmination of our current sound, um, and none of it is out yet, but it will be soon. So. But of an old song. And of an old song, and probably, old song, yeah. do we have a song called Technicolor Dreaming. It's yeah. probably, um, it yeah, it's a nice 80s -y, poppy song that's kind of the direction that the new album is. So. Yeah. yeah. So when does the album come out? Do you have a, a set date yet? Um, <clears throat> not, not an exact date yet. The first song is going to be coming out next month, though, so yes. that will get things rolling with the first song um, in July. And uh, that's called Doors, so keep your eyes open, ears open, I guess. Both. Uh, plans to uh, record a video for it? Make a video for it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that will be coming in the next month as well. We have a lot planned for it. Yeah. Very busy coming up. Uh, what are some of the benefits of making a music video in 2015 when MTV plays really crappy yeah. reality TV shows instead? Um, I think you have to get really kind of clever. Like if you m just like make the sort of, you know, cliche music video, it's just like comes and goes like in a few days. And it doesn't mean you have to have a big budget even, you know, like obviously we've seen really low budget things like blow up. And so I think it's just all about um, being, creative. being creative, but also still sort of letting people, you know, showing people who you are and, and, and letting them in to your world a little bit. I mean, you um, can make videos today when you have access to technology. I mean, everybody can make a video, like, you know, with your phone, literally, and you can be as creative as you want to be. So it kind of feels like the possibilities are endless. Um, feel very lucky that we can do a lot with it. The right combination of the right song and the right visuals yeah. will definitely do that. Um, who or what inspires you when you, when you wrote the record? Uh, man, a lot of different things from like Peter Gabriel and Prince all the way to like Drake and Kanye West and um, Madonna. Madonna. I feel like, I mean, he's speaking from a musical perspective, from a lyric perspective. Um, I think that our stories very much inspire what we write about and sing about um, very personally. So almost everything that we sing about is real and is coming from a real place that it's an experience that we've had and lived through and um, kind of just telling our personal story. And I think that makes it, I think it makes it more powerful when it's, you're speaking honestly from what you've lived. Absolutely. Um, which, do you feel that it's more of a cathartic experience when you sing about those things, or is it sort of a little uncomfortable as well? Both. <laughs> because I, I think that it's, it's taken time, particularly for me, there are a few songs that are very personal and very vulnerable, and so and when we were writing them, it was a very emotional experience, and now getting to sing them live on stage, we've only performed these songs a few times. This is actually the second time. We played Sasquatch a few weeks ago. It's the second time we performed these songs live. Um, and it's empowering because you're getting to tell the story, and it just is. It's it's very it's very cool to have people react, even if they don't know the story that you're telling specifically. Um, it's just uh, it's like kind of magical. Yeah, storytelling can be very powerful. When did you guys realize that you wanted to make music your career? I've been in like rock bands and good and bad since I was like 12 years old when I started to learn how to play the guitar. Um, and so I've just, ever since I started writing my first song when I was, you know, with one chord when I was 12 years old, I've just been drawn to it. You, on the other hand, are from theater. I'm, yeah, I'm a newer convert. Yeah. But I've always known I've wanted to be a storyteller because I've always been in, in the arts and I've been in theater and musical theater, which is obviously literal storytelling. Um, and I found my way into this uh, music world, into the pop world, and I fucking love it. And I have no intention of leaving. Um, so I guess in the, in the last year or two, really, I decided this is what I'm, and performing has always been like my first love, so it feels very much like the correct fit for what I want to do. And I have to say, fashion-wise, it looks like you are, are all set for the stage soon. How much does your personal style sort of uh, affect or um, 
come into play of your overall image uh, as a group? I think it it is our personal style. I you know everything on stage is kind of a more dramatic version of ourselves, but everything that we wear and do and everything that we design in terms of like the look and feel of our album artwork, for example, it's just an extension of what we love, you know, to wear or to look at or enjoy. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, you played Sasquatch earlier. Um, how do you go about creating a set list for a big festival like this? It's interesting. It's like a little kind of moving the pieces around a little bit. And, um, you know, you want to like open with a song that's like really shows everybody what you sound like, but really kind of draws them in. And, um, you know, you want to save, you know, your better best, like your best song for last kind of to leave them with something. And so it's it's tricky. You know, you got to kind of move the pieces around a little bit because you want to you want it to keep it moving, but you want there to be variation. It's and like storytelling. Yeah. It's like there has to you have to like there has to be a, an arc and you have to draw the people in and then you need like that climax. But with the end of a show, it's like the climax kind of just has to continue to build until you're, you're done. It's gotta be tricky to, you know, help uh, make a set list that's good for the, those that are already fans as well as new fans. Um, how do you use social media to connect with fans? I think we, you know, social media, we try to be pretty authentic to just our experience as artists. So letting people know what we're doing on a daily basis. I think people are, because we are, we're very fortunate we get to be professional artists, people are very fascinated. They want to know, like, what are you doing? It's really not all that glamorous a lot of the time. And I think it's nice to show that side of it so people can kind of understand what it's really like to just be making music. And, you know, it's a grind, and it's fabulous, and it's good, and it's bad, and it's hard, and it's great. So it's all those things. So we try to use social media to just show what we're doing to make this happen, to get to be here. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as fans of other artists, our favorite um, social media sort of um, personalities are the ones that, yeah, like are kind of letting you in to see things that nobody else g gets to see, but, you know, also not, but like they're the ones showing you, so you feel like it's okay that you're sort of, you know, it's not like paparazzi where you're like invading their privacy because they're the ones sharing with, right. sharing it, but it is like this, very kind of, you know, can be an intimate behind the scenes look or like a, you know, a, a, or some of them don't take themselves as seriously and stuff like that, you know, it's, it's, it can be a really nice um, kind of B-side to their, their on stage, you know, on screen personality. So, yeah. Show off your personality a little bit too. What's up next for you guys after Firefly? We have a very exciting summer planned. Um, we're heading over to Europe, and we're playing a bunch of festivals in Europe. We're hopping around to like eight countries, I think. I don't even know. I've lost track. But we're we're like I can't even describe how excited we are because we've never played in Europe before. So playing a bunch of festivals over there, and um, just working with the the label to release this music. So building like that plan and getting very excited about it. It's gonna be a big month. And then some. <laughs> so look out for much more from Cardinox. This is Jackie. Thanks to All Access and In the Key of Change. Excellent. Let's go grab a quick picture. And